uh, today we are on uh, China. Uh, Chinese is easier than you think. That's my title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think so. Now let's, now let's look at the grammar first. We have no grammar. <laughs> no grammar. What is Chinese the only language where you have pictures? Uh, it's pictorial. No, no, no. 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 You look at the uh, Dorothy newspaper, what is written on it? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, the, the... Yeah. Albert, oh, you have no grammar. Do you have a grandfather? Sorry? You don't have a grandma. Do you, do you have a grandfather? Joke. Jo don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Good day, Anthony. Good day. My hey, internet is unstable. Uh, anyway, when he talks, we will make sure he, we hear him. <laughs> now, uh, Chinese doesn't have grammar because a character is a character. We cannot put an S E D. So, for example, I say, Yesterday I go to school. I won't say I went to school because. I told you it's yesterday. <laughs> Hello. So there's no need to change the verb. Okay. And then we also doesn't have the singular plural as well. Well, but you're coming in and out. Your image is frozen. And um, uh, when you're speaking, you're coming in and out. I can't hear anything at the moment. Ah, oh, yeah, he's gone completely. <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> One moment. Two people, or more than two people. Lee, Neiman, you, or a number of you. So we can express that by attaching a word to indicate plurality. Okay, so no. I'm sorry, I haven't shared screen. <laughs> That's why right, they sorry I felt that I'm going to share screen now. <laughs> uh, uh, this one. Uh, move it up to share screen. Okay, can you see the screen now? Yep. 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 Yes, yeah, good, good. Yep. And, and we can hear you. Good. <laughs> so, no tense, no plural or singular. Uh, verbs also doesn't depend on gender. I know some languages like French or... No, we, we don't. A verb is a verb. <laughs> and each character always occupies the same amount of space. So we don't need spaces. Each character, oh, you can take one of these. Yeah. yeah, so every character is one space. So because we know that this occupies this space, so we don't need a space to say, okay, this is one word and then the other word. Uh, no article. <laughs> no article. The main, a, a, a dog. We don't need to say that. Okay, we don't need to say that. Okay. Huh? Come on, come back here. Okay. Pronunciation. Chinese characters isolate this pronunciation from its meaning. This, I think they, can you hear? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, it breaks okay. up a bit. Um, yeah. Albert, um, just a point of clarification. Um, which Chinese language are we talking about? Um, 
there's only one Chinese language. Oh, so what? And we have Can different dialects. So Cantonese is a dialect rather than a language. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And okay. now, what? What? How do we distinguish that? In a language, everybody understands the meaning of the written word. <clears throat> no matter you are a mainland China speaking Mandarin, or you are like me at Hong Kong speaking Cantonese as my mother tongue, we can understand the written words, but we may not be able to communicate by speech. <laughs> That's very strange. To you, you will be absolutely amazed. When I, for example, when I go to Beijing and see some of those uh, in, in a conference, when I'm alone, I want to go out to eat. So I ask the receptionist, where can I eat the Beijing duck? End up, I cannot tell her by, by words, by, by speech. So at the end of the day, I write <laughs> and then we understand each other. Huh? So because uh, our, the pronunciation of character is divorced from its meaning, a character can be pronounced differently in different dialects, but the meaning remains the same. No. Now, um, in terms of race, okay, ethnic groups, ethnic groups, okay, uh, in China we have the major ethnic groups as Han. Han, yes. Han represent about 98% of Chinese. So a majority of people are Han people, but even within the Han ethnic groups, there are over a hundred different dialects. Your village here may speak a different dialect, dialect with the village next door and a different dialect with another place because they were isolated for so long. And China is so big and in those days, the main streets, you can only travel by horses and all that. And you're two feet. And the two feet. So, so if you live in Northern China and you live in middle part of China, you will never see each other maybe for generations. Yeah, and yeah. even on the other side of the mountain, uh, it's quite different. Yeah, yeah. but there's also one, one very interesting thing I think I will talk about later on when we talk about the Hakka people. Hakka people are directly translate to visiting people, okay? Uh, these people actually were escaped from political persecution about 500 years ago. And they settled into the southern uh, mountainous regions. And so there will be a group of Hakka people in a province around some village, okay? These people cannot communicate with the villagers next to it. But these people will be able to communicate with a far away Hakka group over there because they were from the original uh, northern Han people escaping prosecution, take their family, settle in one place, and they establish a little enclave. And therefore they speak Hakka, the original language, different from the rest. So can I ask you a slightly different question, politically different? So because 90% of the people of Chinese people are Han, so they are Chinese people of one tribe, does not that make it easier to actually Control or to, 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 to influence things and so on. Because you know that India is a collection of different people. Now, there, are, there are different people. Yeah, I think uh, if we want to explain uh, China and India, I think we need to explain our rivers. Your rivers? <laughs> yes, the Chinese rivers. Okay. Uh, can I leave this question to next time? Okay, I think I, I better explain how the Chinese um, philosophy or the whole political system evolves around the uh, rivers. Okay, I think that, that is a very interesting. Let's just give you a little hint <laughs> is that our yellow river, the riverbed is actually higher than the land next to it. That means the river is flowing above the lane. <laughs> yeah, 
for the Yellow River. So that be explaining, right? Why? What a river always go down, right? Why the river bed in Yellow River is higher than the farmland next to it? Yes, exactly. All the Yellow River is actually yellow. It carries a, a kind of soil called Laos. This soil is a yellow soil, which is very powdery. Okay. If there's no covering on the hillside, the rain falls, all the soil is washed down the Yellow River and make the Yellow River yellow. And of course, these settlements will deposit. Uh, As it deposit there, the water flow will overflow. So, so Albert. Yeah. Sorry. Um, um, presumably, um, this means that the river is polluted, undrinkable, unusable. No, it's, it's still drinkable, but you do you do have to filter it. Ah, okay. Because it has a lot of settlement, so yeah. when you settle it down, it will become clear. But as yeah. it's running, it's carrying all the settlement, so it's yellow. So, because of that. People has been building up the banks for cent for millennia. Okay, the bank keep going up, going up, going up, and the settlement company. Now at those days we can't move the settlements along. We can only build the bank. But because of because of the need of doing that, we need a large government because only one one little village managed to build the bank. But somewhere it breaks. You are you. <laughs> You are still flooded because it can't go back to the. So Chinese has always have a large government. You have to manage the whole river. So that's the difference. The major difference, because we need to survive, right? So because of survival, Chinese need large governments. That explains a lot. We could do with that in the Murray Darling, couldn't we? Yes, exactly. When you have different governments only looking after your own little area, you can't solve the whole problem. You only have very powerful large government to solve the issue. And in case some little villages are disadvantaged, they have to be disadvantaged because that is for better goods for the rest. So we need a very powerful government to govern in China. So you have to cooperate. The, yes, otherwise we can't survive. A survival problem. So you have to cooperate. And that has been ingrained into our philosophy as well. So it's quite different. Okay. And uh, again, there's a self, uh, Chinese is interesting in several sense. The character is different. And then we also have a very different government system from the very beginning. So we will go to that later on when we compare civilizations. We want to look at where, why different area develop different government structure. I explained to you, Chinese need a big government because our river, but it's more than that. Okay. And that also explain why we can read the um, calligraphy over 1,500 years ago, we can still read them, but no other countries can. For example, the English, you can't read Shakespeare. If you get a manuscript from Shakespeare, you don't know what it's writing. Because what we are reading is already modernized to modern English, in order for you to understand. Uh, I would disagree with that. You, you can read and understand Shakespeare, and even going back further, um, Chaucer, um, you can understand. Yeah, I, oh, you, you can well. understand Ato and Aristotle as well, but they are. <laughs> yeah, we, we still have to find out the meaning of those words because it is what? you have to continue updating. But what was the, the question, please? The question is uh, no, they we can uh, you you can't. Let me okay. Yeah, we can we can read most of them, but not all. So That's a very good question, and then <laughs> and you up and they will answer that. 
next slide. <laughs> because again, that need uh, quite a bit of explanation. Okay. Now, how many Chinese characters are there? Not much. <laughs> Only oh. fifty thousand. Ooh. <sighs> uh, but now I'm talking about traditional Chinese. Okay. But you only need 3,000 to be able to write novels. Right, that is a large difference, right? How much, how large is our vocabulary? English vocabulary. Anyone? Yeah, in terms of words, how, how large is our vocabulary? Working vocabulary. 20,000. 20, maybe 30,000. You are a good writer, you may be looking at 40, 50,000. Right, so it's similar number of characters but for normal use for normal use 300 uh, 3000 is enough but if 3000 is enough it is pretty pretty easy to learn but i assume understand that How many of those little swiggles? Eight. So are you saying that the eight swiggles, the eight swiggles, okay, the one here can make up the water? Yes, exactly. Very interesting, isn't it? Now, okay, that is better to teach you some Chinese in order to. Okay, let's learn some Chinese, okay? You have a little piece of paper there. On the other side, I have to show them. <laughs> Sorry, you guys don't have this one, but it is on the screen anyway, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now on the screen is the 10 numbers, one to 10, okay? One is one stroke, two is two stroke, three is three stroke. So you already learned three Chinese characters. Easy, right? One stroke, one, two stroke, two, three stroke, three. Get that, right? Three characters you already learned. Now, I don't want you to learn the rest. We're in the last one. Ten, okay? Across, easy, right? Now you learn four characters. If you learn all these ten characters, how many concepts you can express in compared with English? Is 28. Hmm? 28. If you learn these 10 Chinese characters, you can express 28 concepts, which you will demand 28 vocabulary in English. Why? Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10. 10 characters, right? 11. We don't have 11. We have 1, 10, 1. 1, 10, 1, 11, right? Just like Romans, okay? 1, 10, 1 is our ah. Chinese way of saying 11. 1, 10, 2, our Chinese way of saying 12, right? And then immediately we can express up to 19. 1, 9, 1 10, 9, 19. What about 20? Follow the same rule. 210 is 21. Can you write it on the bottom that you wrote the general Chinese? Can no one say? Okay. Can you write the average? That's one. Okay. Two. Three. Okay. One, ten, one. Is eleven. Easy. Now we can write it horizontally like this, or we can write it vertically. One, ten, one. 11, right? That means I can, using this, I can do up to 99, right? But you, when I was learning English, 99 concepts needs to remember 28 different English words. One to 10, 11 to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So, 10 characters give you 28 concepts. Easy, right? 
You, you see how, how, how a simple character combine, expand your vocabulary without the need of creating new words. What vocabulary. about, sorry, Albert, what about larger numbers? I presume there's a symbol for a hundred and you would have 103, exactly. which would be yep. 103. Yeah. And then another okay. symbol for a thousand. Now we have the oh, 10, right. 100, 1000, and differently, we don't stop at 1000. We stop at 10,000. 10,000 is also one word. Right, right. Okay, so we are four digit base instead of three digit base. What, what do I mean? Uh, three digit base, that means when you reach 1000, you start what 10,000, 100,000, and then you switch to a million, right? Every three digits, you create a new word to express that. A thousand, and then you keep on 20,000, 100,000, and then you create a new word. Thousand, thousand is become million, right? And then you have 10 million, 100 million, 1,000 million, but a thousand million, you create a new word called trillion or billion. billion, billion, right? So you are three digits. Chinese are four digits. When we have 10,000, we have 10, 10,000. A hundred, 10,000, a thousand, 10,000. And then we have 10,000, 10,000, which will come a new word. Okay. So in terms of numbers, you learn the hundred thousand million. Then your, the number you can express is already in the trillion, much larger than the English vocabulary. Whereas it, when, in your case, you still have to learn the word million, billion, uh, million, uh, billion, trillion, etc. Chinese doesn't need that. Of course, we have other other words after 10,000, 10,000, okay? And then 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, another word. Yes, it's the same. But anyway, because it's four digits, it's faster. So, if, if language are part of medical and people are separated out by people, how long are people living in China? <laughs> Depending on um, whether you include um, the so-called um, unwork. Now, history is divided into two parts. One part is we have written history, those which we can verify, and those which is oral history only. Okay, so for written history, Chinese has about 4,000 4, years. For oral and history, we always say we have about 7,000 years history. But Oral history has no proof. People lost sense of how many years. So you see that the implication is our brains must be in the different parts of the world. Our brains must have thought differently to come up with this different system. What is that? Why, why, why is it that we have four digits and why have we just got three digits? Why, why is that? Because of uh, our holding memory. What is holding memory? Ho holding memory. Now, for our holding memory, we have about five spaces, okay? We have five holding memory in our brain. But because English and your Latin languages have double sound for a single concept, 11. So you use two holding language memory to hold 11. Whereas in Chinese, we actually hold it as one one. Because all our characters are single syllable. We don't need two holding places to hold the same concept. All concepts are single syllable. Every word is one syllable. Sorry? Are you saying every word is one syllable or are you just yes. talking about numbers? Or every Chinese word is one syllable. Oh, I thought you'd run woman, out of- uh, Woman, okay, woman. Sorry? Woman, woman, 
啊 ，this is two concept. You already that, but wall 门啊 ，OK, wall is I first person. 门 is plural, and then for the second person, you Li, one word, OK. Li 门 two words. Yeah, it's two separate words. The the 门 is a word by itself. So, 他们 OK, third person. Is also third person plus the plural, the same plural word, and that in, that also applies into everything. The Pets. word Beijing, sorry, the word Beijing or the word Canton, they're both two syllables. No, the word Canton is two words. Canton, two words. So what、But、does it、English、mean literally? Put them together as one. What does Canton mean literally? As... Canton means、um, the Can is a、uh, large area. Tong is、um, the east, so it、ah, is a large、ah. flatland in the east. Yes. And、oh. Beijing stands for Bay is north. Yeah,、uh, Beijing、ah. means、uh, stands for north capital.、Ah. Bay is north. Jing is the capital, North capital. In the chat, in the history, we have meet at the West capital, Xi'an, Xi'an. Okay, Xi'an was the capital of China for many dynasties, until the Ming dynasty when they moved the capital into today's Beijing, and、mm -hmm. that is called Bay North capital, Jing.、Mm -hmm. Beijing. Okay. That is very confusing at the moment, because they need to translate between the English and the Chinese. So then, when they are writing in alphabet, in, sorry, in Arabic numbers, they use three digits. But in scientific papers, they won't translate it into words. They will keep the Arabic numbers. So we have a standardized international way of expressing. But when they talk, they may use the Chinese version, and that is very confusing. So, so are you saying looking at different data that they talk about? So it's just that the Chinese contact English is more efficient. Brain, or just, uh, no, it's not about efficiency. It's about ho temporary holding the information and processing it, because English sometimes need more than one memory to hold a concept. Sometimes, now in terms of calculation, for example, the、uh, Indians and Chinese are very good at mental calculations. I don't know why、um, uh, Indians are very good. I know why we are good because our、uh, multiplication table. I I will say some some for you, okay? Let's say from two, one, two, 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 It's all single syllable, okay? So for the whole multiplication table from one to ninety-nine is one hundred four four sound <coughs> memory devices. Nine seven, okay? Six, double check, double check. Six three, nine seven six three. We went in this way. So it's, it's it's efficient, but in in、uh, Western style, nine times seven, seven occupy two memory equals sixty three, sixty two memory. But Chinese nine seven six three, you remember the sequence? No need to. So that's where the efficiency comes in. But there are other places where Chinese are not efficient. Because you have other devices in your grammar to express some idea, which the Chinese has to explicitly tell you. 
right? Now, that's one way. And that also is the redundancy. That means when you say something, you may be misunderstood. So you need a redundancy to correct for the misheard syllables. Chinese need to do that as well. Because all Chinese characters are single syllable. So a lot of things, now we can only express that number of sounds, vowels, okay? You have only that number of vowels. Where every word is a single syllable, you have, you will very easily misunderstood. So we need redundancy. Of course, we can understand something, our context, but still you need redundancy in order to remove this. So almost all Chinese objects are using two characters to, to describe, almost all. Sorry? Yeah. The Esperanto is very much a Western way of generalizing the, the language. It yeah. doesn't include the Chinese concept there. So Esperanto is talking about different uh, Romanized languages and then standardizing the grammar, standardizing. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, but it's not in the same same. Well, it's not, it's not that is a Western Western way. Chinese doesn't work that way. Now, okay, let me expand the power of the Chinese language one more step. A segue from that, just before you move on. Um, am I right in thinking that most um, Asian languages, such as Korean, um, such as Japanese, originally derived from Chinese? No. No? No. What? No. Are you sure? Yes, I'm very sure. I always thought it is. No, it's not. They have their own language, <laughs> but they take in a lot of the languages from the Chinese into their language. <clears throat> Just like English take in other languages into English. Okay, so <laughs> it has been adopt, adopted, but it's not a direct uh, descendant of Chinese. No, so they have no... Uh, generation relationship. There is a borrow relationship. So is it similar to what we were talking about or that I was talking about last week when you've got Yiddish, which is mainly old German, but you've got little bits of um, French, um, Italian, um, Hebrew, etc. cetera, um, German uh, tacked onto well, it's old. There's German, borrow. So, yeah. And yeah. There's yeah. 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 Okay. They borrowed the Chinese characters into their language, but borrowing and adopting, but they have their own original language. For example, the Japanese grammar is totally different from the Chinese grammar. And therefore, when they read, they need to do mental translation from the characters they see and change the order. <laughs> Japanese probably originate from their own little island and they have been there for so long they develop their own language. In the diaspora though, where, where did, there must have been an original source. The, well, we are all Af Africans, okay? In that sense, we are all Africans. But after we migrate out of Africa, <laughs> different regions isolate and develop its own method of survival. And that method of survival also modify its culture and language. Well, I heard it said by some Chinese people long ago that Japanese, Japanese have still a certain province of Chinese that's better than us. That's not true. Uh, that is a uh, oral history, no proof. People say Japanese people were the people from the first emperor sending out to look for, it's called excelsior, that means long life. Long longevity. Long 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 yeah, uh, that was the, the oral history. A story. Uh, story, we have no proof. Were the land forms, were they always separate? Uh, yeah, separate? yeah, they were. Never, uh, we've had a lot of change. They're, they're, so they're, they're, yeah, they are, they are separate. Okay, let me move on to that one. 
I will increase one more character, moon, okay? With that increase, you have increased your vocabulary by 13 because January, January is one moon. February, two moon. March, three moon. Oh A moon God. from bright, from full moon to full moon is about 28 days. It's about a month. So we count it as one moon, two moon, three moon, four moon, and that replaces all the 12 months of the English. See, one more word, you increase your vocabulary by 13. Sure. Because moon itself has meaning, right? So that is one meaning. And then together with the numbers, you now have all the 12 months. But, Isn't um, that difficult? Albert. No, we don't. We, we call it one moon, two moon, three moon. First moon, second moon, third moon, fourth moon. Yeah. 12 moon, 12 moon, December. Yeah. And then, and to that we can have 13 moon as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Albert, I didn't hear the question. It might have been a very similar question to what I was going to ask, but am I correct in thinking that um, the Chinese cal the calendar is very similar to um, the Hebrew calendar in that? Um, you have 12 lunar months, but then every um, uh, seven out of 19 years, you have an extra month so that you um, catch yep. up with the solar calendar. Yes, yes. Right. So we call the Chinese calendar the lunar calendar. Yes. So because it's based on the moon, so it's lunar calendar. Well, and then, so our lab... We, we call the calendar the lunisolar calendar because it's a mixture of um, a lunar calendar and a solar calendar. Yeah, and then of course we need to ma match up with the with the extra uh, shortness of the uh, lunar month. Uh, lunar months, okay. So we have lap year, as you say, our lap year is not increased by one day. Our lap year is increased by one month. Yeah, so, exactly the same in in. Um, Hebrew, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, because Luna, Luna, you want to match up, you cannot match up by inserting one day. That you will match the, um, for the Chinese, full moon is always on the 15th day of the month. Just, you, you might be interested. Um, the interesting calendar is the Coptic Orthodox calendar as used in Egypt, where you have 13 months every year, you have 12 um, lunar months, and then you have what they call little month, which is 11, 12 or 13 days. And so that you catch up with the um, solar calendar. Okay, so there are different methods doing that. That's now, right, yes. Yeah, in terms of agriculture, like we know Chinese uh, is an agricultural society. So agriculture is very much depends on the sun. It's not dependent on the moon. And therefore, how do you tell the farmers, okay, what they to sow, <laughs> right? So we also have all these solaces like here. So for example, um, the winter solaces and the summer solaces are two very important dates in the Chinese calendar. And then we celebrate that date. So in the original lunar calendar, we have also the so-called 24 seasons times. And that 24 season times matches with the solar calendar. And therefore, when you buy a, buy a calendar, then you will have both the lunar dates as well as your so, uh, 24 seasons dates in which, for example, a winter solace is always celebrated throughout the world. Here we call it Christmas, but actually it's a winter solace holiday. Yes. And in China, it is a big deal. Everybody gathers together, have a big meal, and uh, similar to all other countries. Chinese New Year. Yeah, Chinese New Year is based on the spring, um, the coming, the 
春分is、um, equinox. Equinox. It's based on that one. So we have different Chinese New Year, different years, because it depends on. But it is always similar in、uh, in the Western calendar. So that again, it's the same as the Hebrew calendar.、So、yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, two more words. The first one is year. The last one is month. Then you have that, and then you can express your dates. Again, Chinese use the numbers. Okay. This is twenty twenty one year. Ah,、uh, this is the five five moon, and this is the ah、uh, four day. So we count it that way, okay? So you see that I think that explains to you why Chinese is easy to learn if you learn it through writing. Three thousand characters. How long it take you to learn three thousand characters? You. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you are consistent, okay, every month you learn say thirty one one character what a day, okay, one one month you learn thirty one year you have learned three hundred sixty ten years, you can write novels. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> but again. The difficulty of language actually is not the character itself or the language; it's the culture behind it. For example, in English, we we have the Aesop's fable. Is that fable? Yeah. All these, all these implicit idioms, all these implicit idea. For example, when I first learned about look out, what? <laughs> look out. Okay. Wrong. No. Not not say me. Look. <laughs> See, so that is where the difficulty is. Yes, learning the characters are easy, but once you get into the culture, it's like any language. You really. So in Chinese, like, is it possible to insult someone and they don't know that we insulted? Yes, <laughs> just like any language, <laughs> you can do whatever you like. And we have also very rude languages as well. And then we, <laughs> yeah, same. Yes,、mm -hmm. satire, everything. We are human. We share the same human characteristics. So the language is now. Another interesting is how do Chinese incorporate new scientific idea into language? Hmm, that is interesting, isn't it? Okay, let me give you one very、uh, recent example. You know, the Japanese want to、uh, discharge their Uh, polluted water into the Pacific, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the main concern we have is there are two、um, isotopes in the discharge, which we worry about. The first isotope is carbon fourteen. Carbon fourteen has a half life of about two thousand years. That means if we discharge into water. It will take two thousand years to dilute to about half, and then another two thousand years to dilute to another half. That means a quarter. So we usually would say five half life will be sufficiently diluted, but half five half life means ten thousand years. Our human written history is about four thousand. How can we guarantee we can keep that safe for ten thousand years? Big question. Now that one, carbon fourteen in Chinese, carbon one word. Okay, tan, fourteen one four, <laughs> carbon fourteen, carbon fourteen tan sub say sub ten four, carbon fourteen. Okay, so we we can take the idea back in like this. Okay, and another way, the other thing we worry about the polluted water is the. Tritium. Ah,、uh, hydrogen has only one <coughs> proton. Okay, if the proton coupled with a neutron, then it's called durium, a heavy hydrogen. And then if it's coupled with two neutrons, it's the tritium, heavy heavy hydrogen. Okay, so. 
Sorry, you guys can't see. This is for air, 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 air okay? Air. But for to say this is helium, okay? When we want to do the trillium, two. <laughs> when we want to do the trillium, one, two, three. <laughs> Is that a new word? Yeah, it is a new word. It's new word. And the pronunciation is very interesting as well. It's called do. Tune. Tune. Trillium. Tune. Dulium. Two. Two. So this is the hydrogen with a proton and a neutron. So we put two strokes there. Easy to understand some kind of air, which is two, <laughs> durium. And there's some kind of air, which is three. But if you put the fire in there, what would become? It's elephant. Um, this part represents something related to air. And there are all different kinds kind of gas put it inside to describe what kind of gas you have. Okay. You, you guys know me, know that I'd like to eat. So we have the animal here. I think Albert can tell us the story about why we call uh, the meat coming from a ox or a cow beef. Why we call the meat coming from a sheep lamb. You okay. want to explain that? Um. This, this, of course, is in English. And as far as I understand, English is the only language where the name of the animal changes when it goes from um, the farm into the kitchen. And that into goes the, back- Onto the dish. Yeah, well, into the kitchen to be cooked. Because um, this goes back to- um, 1066 and the Norman invasion of um, uh, England um, and you had uh, uh, the farmers speaking um, uh, an Anglo uh, dialect but in the um, in the manner you had uh, um, people speaking Norman French and so um, the, um, the cow changed to birth or beef. Um, the um, pig changed to um, pork. Um, uh, the uh, sheep changed, uh, oh, yeah, the sheep changed to mouton and so on. And as I said, I think English is the only language where that actually occurs, where to this day you have different words depending on whether it's a food stuff or whether it's an animal wandering around the field. Thank you, Albert. So he explained what, now that's incorporation, right? The language is, is incorporate other language into your, your language. For the Chinese, we have animal names, the first one is a pig, cow, sheep, chicken, duck. Okay. Then you Are want we to going from left to right or right to left? Uh, left to right. Oh. But Chinese and would originally have gone from right to left. Because I'm using the, the American technology. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. Right. Okay. But why? 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 Uh, yes, we talked about that last week because uh, depending on your what is your major hand. So when your major hand is your left hand, it's easier to start from. Uh, no, uh, sorry, I can't. I I can't distinguish my left and right. So <laughs> when I when I teach when I teach physics. You have the left hand rule, right hand rule, right? So I have to write down on my hand which is left and which is right. Gonna for that lesson, the students oh. laugh at me. Yeah. Oh. I. Okay. Our, our languages, 
The Chinese language is right to left. Yeah, like the Hebrew. Like Hebrew is also right to left. Uh, but I can't understand why, because most people are right-handed. Yeah, so that's why you start with the right hand. And why is our people start left to right? Uh, you ask me, I don't know. <laughs> but... <laughs> actually, actually, the Chinese uh, language is... Vertical. 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 Uh, vertical. Vertical. Right to left. So, so when you after you visit the first word, you go down. The second word, you can see the first word already because when you going down, it's going straight. After going down, going yeah, down, we go in down, down and down, then go up. Straight, then then up. Yeah, we we go vertical first. That was the, our our original <laughs> way of writing. Yeah, if you see all the ancient tablets, carved in stone, it's this way. Uh, yeah, the current time is this way. <laughs> Thank yeah, thank you. That's very good explanation. Okay, okay. Now, to us, we put the word meat after the animal. You got the animal's meat. Easy, right? Now, human meat, we use the word human plus the word meat means you are carnival. Uh, is that called carnival? <laughs> yeah, but to me, it's another word, carnival. Is eat human meat. That's it. <laughs> or eat human but you have carnivals so it's different okay and then for male and female we usually put that in front <laughs> male chicken female chicken so is this important in Chinese cuisine as to whether the animal is male or female yeah you you yeah. can order. Uh, we have three sexes for chickens. Yeah, male, female, and the uh, what's called um, castrated male. <laughs> castrated male chicken. Yeah. I, this is amazing. I've I've been eating um, Chinese food in restaurants for virtually all my life, and I didn't know that you differentiated between sexes. Yeah, of course. Come on. Here is Australia. You are not eating Chinese. You are eating Australian lies. Of course. Uh, yeah, but but even so, yeah. Yeah. Our chicken has three sexes for 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 eating because the male chicken is aggressive. It's not easy to raise a male chicken among Exactly. So we don't need that many male chickens. Okay. So cascade it so that it's much calmer. Oh, that is a long open a little slit. And then uh, when I was young, there were people traveling around uh, on a bicycle. Bring the bell, you know, this guy is here and you Bring out your male chicken and he cast it within a minute. How old is the chicken? I don't know. Right? I was only a kid. <laughs> so, they have babies in here. Uh, uh, this, this is a big chicken. Uh, it's already quite big. Quite big. It's a few months old. Yeah. Yeah. Are you suggesting that um, the female animal is more tender than the male? Yeah. Yes, usually. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Can you explain to me, there must be some significance why the male has that thing, but you, there must be some logic to why they put it so single, right? Yeah. Can you explain to me why? Uh, is, it, is, it or is it just uh, what you just say? Okay, now, I don't think I can explain all characters, okay? I can explain a few for you. Let me explain the word meat. You have a piece of meat with ribs hanging there. The meat. See that? <laughs> okay. Now for sheep, this word. Two horns. The two horns is the second part of the sheep. Ah, for the cow. 
The important thing is you can lead the cow at its nose. And for example, our work for mountain is like this, which is mm, so Chinese are pictorial in a sense. Okay. But and, as the number of characters develop. You have to adopt can... different methods to express the same idea. For example, <coughs> we have a word small, a word large. When you combine it together into one word, it means sharp. Small at the top, big at the hand, at the no. bottom. Sharp. Goodness. Sharp. This kind of thing. Very, <laughs> very interesting. Chinese. Because it's different from what you understand as a language. It's different. Okay. It doesn't mean it's better or worse. It doesn't. But Chinese has been in use at least for 4,000 years. And the current format, the current uh, calligraphy style was fixed about 1,000, uh, 2,000, 2,000, 2,200 years ago. Any words before that, we have problem reading ourselves as well. But from, we have developed what we call kai shi. Then Chinese characters stabilized. And I will, yeah, I will explain that uh, the different political system, why it happened as we move into the uh, society about civilizations. Anyone interested in me talking about the other three uh, similar languages in Korea and Japan? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I will try to prepare something and next time, if I can make it, we will talk about Japanese and Korean. And you, you would you include Mongolian in that list too? Sorry, include what? Mongolian? Mongolian not, I don't know Mongolia. Uh -huh. uh, did, I did sorry? <laughs> yeah, we had the first sex because the, there is a, a specialist who travel to different villages and only doing that. He strengthened the, he strengthened the male finger uh, so that he could concentrate on getting fat and not other things. Do they have a special dish for them there? Yes, of course. Xingai. Oh, it's a different name. And it is Xingai Ngau Bat Lam. Is, very famous. Order that in the Chinese restaurant here, see if we get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we can get it here. <laughs> it will be cruelty to animals. <laughs> but it looks like it doesn't hurt much. The good thing is only the, the nail stickers because they feed it to the pig straight away or the pig. Is that really? Yeah, yeah but to, it, in two come, days. They it, they it. Yeah, two days yeah. when they when the chickens hatch. There is, they go through a, a production line, throw all the mail into a crusher. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's very cruel. Yeah. It's yeah. much cruel than the Chinese way. <laughs> and way so, yes. Yeah. And, and that's why, um, you know, um, some of the pork have a special smell because they are male male pork. The female doesn't have that smell. It is typical because of the testosterone. So the Chinese also have a way of cascading the pigs as well. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, we will stop here and then we will switch on to China today. <laughs>